welcome to Faith and Film, a program designed to keep you aware of what's happening in the world of faith and family entertainment. I'm very excited about my guest today because he's doing something that few filmmakers are doing, at least in the faith space, and that is creating a series, an episodic uh, series. Uh, you know, most producers want to produce their, their big movie or something, and uh, what's really needed right now and what the world is doing is really more of the episodic stuff where they grab you, they hold on to you for many episodes, and don't let you go. You get so involved in, in the uh, you know in the series that you just are always glued to to uh, to the TV. Uh, they call it binging. So anyway, Brett Monk is a Christian filmmaker and creative director of the Mount Hideaway series, the mystery series uh, of books, audiobooks, and movies. He's also a homeschooling dad and a former church planting pastor. All right, pastor to pastor today. Uh, Brett got his degree in radio, TV, and film at James Madison University and has been working in media for over 30 years. He also planted and pastored a non-denominational church for 10 years. Man, we seem to have a lot of similarities here, Brett. Uh, Brett spent many years creating industrial films for various government agencies, and much of his interest in spy and detective pl uh, plots comes from experiences working with law enforcement and various three-letter agencies. Brett! Welcome to Faith on Film. Am I to assume we're not talking about an MBA or MLB or one of those three-letter agencies? Uh, no, not those three letters. But other, well, the one that the one that I can perfectly publicly say is I worked for the FBI for a long time. Okay. Actually, at uh, at the FBI training center in Quantico, mm -hmm. and got to do some really really neat projects for those folks. Um, and but yeah, other agencies that start with three letters. When when I was we doing just, that full time, I. <laughs> yeah, I, I did have a, um, a, a mod, I'll call it a modest level of security clearance. Wow. And so we did some, you know, skiff level edit when the edit uh, room would be uh, turned into a skiff and, mm. you know, nobody could come in and out and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, working wow. in the Washington, D.C. area as a film professional, which is where I've been most of my life, that's where the steady work is. It's working for government contractors and things like uh... that. You know, it's it's funny how God has a plan for our life, maybe for many, many years later. And he, of course, he picked that plan from early on, but he takes us through other areas that kind of prepare us for what is ultimately our, uh, our, our calling or our purpose. Seems like maybe that's what happened to you, isn't it? Very much so. And I can tell you, Isaac, um, with great humility that I am still on that path, even today, mm. yesterday and today, yeah. I'm like, wow, I see how something that happened back when I was in high school uh -huh. is just now starting to bear fruit. And I can see how God's really going to be using that experience that I had long forgotten about, but now it's just coming back to me. And so definitely still on that journey. Yeah. And, you know, even the pastoring part, and, and I, I said it the, uh, when I was doing the intro that we have very similar paths. That's because I also, I mean, I've been in, in, uh, in Christian TV pretty much all my life, but I also took a little bit of a detour for a while and, and joined with this pastor. And we started a church. We planted a non-denominational church, which has grown to be a 13 or 14,000 mega church now. Uh, oh, but wow. I did it for 10 years. And, and even that was... Uh, in essence, in preparation for what I'm doing now, because everything that I knew, do now, I don't look at it as a career anymore. I look at it as a ministry, and I look at it uh, through the eyes and the heart of a pastor. So, absolutely, absolutely. So, sounds like that's what's happening with you now. Tell us a little bit then about how you how you really got started. Um, well. Really, it goes back about as long as I can remember from being in plays at my the church that I grew up in at probably five, six, seven years old. And then I remember in what they call it middle school now to us, it was junior high school. I, I remember one really um, kind of life changing event when they were doing the tryouts for the school plays and I was in the seventh grade and I had been sick the day before the tryouts and I hadn't heard the announcement that you were supposed to bring in your release form and so they made the announcement that today are the tryouts and you can stay after if you've got your release form and I didn't so I went home and I was just heartbroken because it was something that I really wanted to do and I got home and my phone rang and it was the teacher who was the director of the play saying, hey, um, I realized that Brett was out sick yesterday because she was also my English teacher, and I know that you wanted to be in the play and you probably forgot your release form. You wanted to, Can your mom just bring you on over right now? Oh, that is so neat. And that 
kind of changed my life. Just, you know, just somebody caring enough to say, hey, I see something. I was paying attention to you and I see something in you and come, come on in, come on in. Um, and so just being in plays throughout high school and then in college, I majored in what we then called radio, TV, film. Now it would be media, something or other. And from graduating college, then I moved to Northern Virginia not long after that and had a long career in making industrial training films for the government and companies and hospitals and things like that. And just like you, I also took, I, I love the way I think you called it uh, taking a break from <laughs> media uh, and or a detour. A detour. And I also... The detour, I also planted and pastored the church for 10 years. And one of the things that was interesting was I had really kind of gotten tired of the full-time job doing these corporate government training videos. And God called me into pastoring. And when I when I left the media job, cameras still cost $50,000 and weighed 40 or 50 yeah. pounds. And an editing suite was a $300,000 investment. Absolutely. And when I came out 10 or 12 years later, I, I threw a, a God coincidence situation. I got hooked up with some this bunch of college kids who were running around making films with what looked to me like a Canon still camera. Uh -huh. And so it was like, what is this? And I very found, quickly found out that the, the whole industry had changed yeah. to the point that I could now jump back in and do some amazing work I never imagined I'd be able to do as a filmmaker. I, I totally get it, because in, in TV now, I'm actually, and not for this particular show, but I'm, I'm going to be able to do interviews using three iPads. The cameras are basically sure. three iPads, and, an, and another one is the switcher. So. <laughs> Technology has totally made it possible for a lot of us to, to do what we need to do because we don't have to spend a million dollars anymore. Tell you what, we're going to take a quick break right now. And when we come back, we want to hear all about the series. The, what is it? Mount Hideaway Mysteries. Mysteries. Mount Hideaway Mysteries. All right. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Ever wanted to binge watch family-friendly TV without all of the commercials? Well, as a mother of two young children, it's vital that I have a platform I can trust. And 24 Flicks is where I find incredible movies, shows, comedy for me, and for my children as well. And for only $3.99 a month, it's a no-brainer for us. You can join other moms like me by going to 24flicks.com and get your seven-day free trial. Got a postcard from the grandkids. They went to the ark. Yeah, what does it say? Well, Annie says they had a blast and that it's really, really big. Everything looks big to a six-year-old. Well, Hudson says it's even bigger than the castle. It can't be that big. Can it? Go ahead, think bigger. Faith on Film, I need to make a correction. Apparently, the Mount Hideaway um, Mysteries is not a series. The books are a series, but the Mount Hideaway film is actually two films. But you know what, Brett? Let me, let me just say something sure. here real quick. I may sure. have actually just spoken prophetically. You never know. <laughs> you, you never know. You because, never know. Because I've always just kind of felt, number one, that we need you know, episodic series. 
And this seems to be perfect for that. Well, I'll tell you, um, not, not to get too off topic, but my actual plan is once we've kind of wrapped up the Mount Hideaway story, mm -hmm. my goal is to kind of take everything that I've learned from that in and in not just in filmmaking, but also in making this whole package of movies and books and audio books mm -hmm. created around a, a specific little world and probably just start from scratch with a new setup, but absolutely turn that into what would be a very ongoing series of movies, the books and the audio books and the whole package. I'm going to challenge you to just expand this vision because I think it's perfect for it. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that a lot. Okay, so tell us how you even came up with that, uh, that concept. Well, the Mount Hideaway um, environment or world, it's basically about a small town in Virginia, in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, that has a secret government base just outside of it on, high up on a secluded mountain. And the place I got that idea was I grew up in a small town in the Shenandoah Valley that has a secret government base. Uh, it's, uh, the, the real base is called Mount Weather. And the town is based, uh, the fictional town is based on uh, Winchester, Virginia. And that's where I grew up. And, it, and basically it's about a bunch of Christian homeschooled kids who solve murders and mysteries in the small town. But some of the spy influence from the town is coming from the Mount Hideaway facility where a couple of the kids' parents actually work. And so there's some really neat interaction between the Christian homeschooled kids and their parents, some of whom work for secret government agencies, but also run their homeschool co-op. And it's just got some really neat uh, what what Stacy and I, I co-wrote the script with Stacy Bradshaw, mm -hmm. and we're trying to really bring kind of a fresh exciting feel to Christian films. And so really making a, there aren't that many Christian murder mysteries out at the moment, especially right. starring high school kids. You know, it's a young adult series. And so, um, yeah, so basically it was kind of a fictionalized version of my growing up in a small town with this secret government facility nearby. Well, but <laughs> it's no longer a secret if you just revealed it here today. <laughs> well, the fact that it's there is a secret. What they actually do uh. is still um, a really quick story. Actually, my college roommate moved on to work for the CIA and the NSA. Oh, those are three letter yeah. agencies. And I talked to him about as was writing the plot, and he actually put me in touch with someone who had the the first hand knowledge, I'll put it that way. And when I was describing the plot of the movie, I was like, Can you tell me anything that, you know, just little tidbits that I could put in that would make it a little more realistic? And after about three days of silence, he texted me back and said, I am so sorry to do this, but what you just described is actually my job. That's literally what I do. <laughs> And so I can't tell you anything oh, wow. because what you're talking about is actually <laughs> kind of more real than I could really tell you about. Oh, <laughs> now, where are you at in this whole process? You, you've, uh, you've, you've done the books already? Uh, the first book is out first and is on okay. Amazon for sale and a lot of other book, booksellers. Uh, it hit the bestseller list the first week it was out as a new release in Christian oh. Adventure Mysteries. And that was very exciting. The, the first movie was released uh, about three years ago. And we have the second movie has been filmed. I'm sitting here at my editing station. And as soon as we get off this call, I'm back to finishing the editing of it. We hope to have it released in a couple of months, a little later this year. And very excited that today, not only do I get to spend time visiting with you, but today was our big announcement that we have just released the audiobook on audible.com. So if you've got an Audible subscription, look up Mount Hideaway Mysteries, or it's also going to be available on a lot of the other audiobook places, some of the ones you can check out with your library card. But so the first movie, the first book, and the first audiobook are available as of now. And we're just in the process of rolling out the, the movie sequel and the rest of the books 
as we can as we can crank them out. Of course, as you know, uh, be, being independent Christian producers, we're a tiny, tiny little group of people, mm -hmm. and so we're, there's no big Hollywood corporation or contracts or funding here. We're just working really hard, pouring our hearts into it, and cranking them out as best we can. Well, Jesus changed the world with 12 people, so. Exactly. <laughs> you're, you're, exactly. In good, you're in good company. And of course, having Stacey Bradshaw on your team is, that's a very good, that's a very good thing because she is, she's terrific. She's so talented. She is amazing. And again, not trying to overplug the audio books, but I do the, uh, the male voices and the narration and Stacy did all the female voices and the, just the characters and the voices that she brings out just really makes the audio book so immersive and engaging. And it's an honor to work with Stacy. Uh, she's a really, really amazing lady. Yes, yes she is. Um, so you now when, when I was booking you for the show, I, you know, I usually send an email and ask them, you know, what would you like to talk about, you know, on segment one, on segment two, and you brought something up that you wanted to talk on segment three. So we're of course going to wait till segment three to talk about it, uh, right after this break that we're about to go to. But you wanted to talk about marketing. Why did you find that so important? The reason I find it so important is especially if I could just appeal to my brothers and sisters in Christian film, I meet so many people, at, you know, especially at Christian film festivals and filmmaker friends that I know, and they make these beautiful films that they feel like God has put this story on their heart. And then when I ask them, okay. so what are you doing for marketing? How are you getting the movie out there? Their answer is usually, well, I, I'm hoping somebody will pick it up or I guess God's yeah. just going to and okay. oh i oh i just because i if you spent that much time and you really feel like god has put this story on your heart number one it should get out to the people that should see it but in addition to that if you're putting that much much excellence into the writing and the camera and the lighting shouldn't it be a responsibility before god to right. to see that as much excellence is put into the, the the way that you get it out to the the getting the uh, the evangelism part okay. of it the getting the good news out part all right well when we come back you're going to give us some tips on what's the best way to do this correct i'll do the best i can all right hooks don't go away we'll be right back eighty percent of americans want more family-friendly content eighty percent so what's the solution? 24 Flicks On Demand. That's right, 24 Flicks provides unlimited safe, family-friendly content without profanity, nudity, sexual content, and substance abuse. You can enjoy movies, TV series, comedy, sports, and so much more. Simply go to 24flicks.com. 24 Flicks, it's your home for unlimited, family-friendly, on-demand videos. Dad? This is a lot of work. It, it might take us the entire weekend. You think this is rough? Try building one of the most massive wooden ships in history without modern tools. Go ahead, think bigger. YBL is an experience like none other. Whether you are thinking about a call into leadership and ministry or something else. I would do it again in a heartbeat. I learned a lot about having self-confidence in myself as a leader. Even though we're teenagers, we still have the power and the capacity to change the world. God can do amazing things in a very short amount of time. The material that we studied, the activities that we did, really helped us to see that. Going to YBL and hearing from professors that are my future professors and professors now, coming to Asbury is really like a continuation of what Youth Become Leaders was. It was really important having a group of people my age who wanted to do what I wanted to do. We kind of end up as a family, which is the best thing I think about YBL. Welcome back to Faith on Film. We are here with Brett Monk, 
who has worked for a lot of three-letter agencies, and they are not the uh, NBA or MLB. But that's in the past now. Now you're going to talk to us about marketing. Uh, I'm assuming then that you've done a little research, perhaps, and you kind of know what's the best way that we can, as, as low, I'm going to call it low-budget filmmakers, because, you know, the studios have no problem. They'll spend tens of millions of dollars making sure that you know about their film. The more independent, lower-budget films, they don't, they don't have that kind of money, but there is something they can do, right? Oh, there's so much that you can do. And to, um, so the first thing, I don't know that I can tell you what's the best way for your movie or anyone else, because every every film, any movie, every movie, every product is different. Um, I will say, and I'll just throw this out really quickly, it is my opinion as a guy that has been a pastor that the fivefold ministry from Ephesians 4, prophets, pastors, apostles, teachers, and evangelists, isn't just God's structure for church leadership. It's his structure for a lot of things, including your movie. And so the prophet is the writer who speaks the story out of nothing. The pastor is the producer, who's the shepherd, who makes sure all of the people are taken care of. The apostle is the director, who is really setting things in order and keeping the project going. The teachers are your, you'd call them the department heads in a bigger film, the people who are setting, making sure things are done correctly and the, the engineering is done. And what a lot of films get all of those things right, but then the, there is no evangelist who goes out to tell the good word mm. about we have made this story. Let me, I want to tell you about this story we've made. Here's the story we've made and here's what it's doing and here's why it's important that people and there's so many reasons that filmmakers shy away from that. And I, I would just as a, as a word of encouragement, don't shy away from that part of this okay. ministry. And just a couple of practical things. It, what, well, actually, on the encouragement side, the other thing is marketing is building a relationship with your audience. Mm -hmm. It's not being a um, a sleazy salesperson, especially in the age of social media. Marketing has to do with connecting and finding out, uh, especially in social media is a great tool. Email lists are a great tool. Giveaways are a great tool. And one of the things that we've learned through trial and error with the Mount Hideaway Project that I think has helped us a lot is a lot of problems with marketing a movie is all you have to offer is this movie and once people have watched it once what else do you talk about and through a series of mistakes and god leading me around or like forest gump the leaf blowing in the wind i was led to not just making the two movies but also making the series of books and audiobooks and if you've already created this great story and you can transform your movie into a your story into additional products that rate from a business point of view that then raises your return on investment mm -hmm. because you have more things to talk about you have more reasons to send out an email newsletter i'm getting ready to launch a bunch of facebook ads because our first audiobook is out every time a new book a new ebook a new audiobook in the series comes out it gives you something to talk about and as you do multiple products again it's not about being a salesman and being pushy mm -hmm. it's about a two-way relationship with your audience. Um, I'm an adoptive homeschooling dad in addition to being a filmmaker, and my daughter has joined our crew. She actually joined the crew, joined my family in the middle of us making the movie. Mm. And just that experience, which is a whole other story, has connected me with a group of adoptive homeschooling parents. And I'm talking to them about the movie. I'm, it's building the evangelism yeah. side of things is building relationships with people that that has got to be the best thing i've heard of uh, how to apply the fivefold ministry to the film industry um, i always wondered where i felt fell in place i kind of thought maybe there's got to be a sixth fold in the ministry because i didn't know you know when i was a pastor i didn't know where to fit in my kids used to call me the pastor of entertainment so uh -huh. I thought, well there's got to be that as the sixth but anyway that, that was that was fantastic now if people want to learn more they want to know what you know where you're at in the process they want to follow you? What's the best way to reach you or to at least follow you? 
One, the best way to follow us really is well, our website, mounthideaway.com. We post a lot of stuff there. Really, our Facebook page is a okay. wonderful place. And I that gives me notifications anytime somebody sends a message or whatever. And that's a wonderful place to see what's going on. All we right. post there very often. And I'd love to interact with folks in the community. Probably looking at us up on the Facebook page is the best way to do that. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being with us. And uh, remember, I know it's two movies now, but pathetically, it's probably going to be a lot more. All right. You better get Sounds ready. Sounds good to me. You better get ready Sounds for it. Good. <laughs> All right. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Love the classic movies? Well, 24 Flicks has you covered. You can watch some of your favorite movies and TV shows you've known and loved. Watch anytime and anywhere and as many times as you want. Simply go to 24flicks.com and start watching now. 24 Flicks is your home for unlimited, family-friendly, on-demand videos. Meet Will. Will wants to make a movie based in Bible times. No, maybe a Western. Well, maybe an apocalyptic movie. A biblical era apocalyptic Western? That would be so original. But Will needs some sweet sets to bring it to life, and Will is 25,352 miles away from any of those sweet, sweet sets. Or so he thinks. Fortunately for Will, there is a solution. Introducing Capernaum Studios, your ticket to realistic locations and everything else you need to bring your period accurate story to life. Book a tour today, like Will, who is, um, yet to leave. They say it's really big. What's really big? Those aren't silly. Oh, I know. It's bigger than the size of our house. It's a little bigger than that. Like the size of two houses. <gasps> no two houses and a spaceship. I bet it's even bigger than the castle. Don't be ridiculous. That's impossible. Welcome back. We have come to the end of another show. I hope you enjoyed today's show. I want to remind you that if you want to catch some previous interviews that I've done, you just have to go to my YouTube channel. That's youtube.com and then look for Faith on Film TV. So that's youtube.com and look for Faith on Film TV. There you will find over 90 interviews that I've done in the past. I also want to remind you to shoot me a little note. Write me a, write me a little note. Let me know that you're out there. Uh, simply write me at Faith on Film TV at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. And of course, you can always follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. Remember, if you want to keep a good, healthy soul, as I always say, you got to feed it some good, healthy entertainment. All right? Till next week, take care. <laughs>